The grid of the future. What is it? How should it run? And how can it stay reliable? There's a lot of discussion lately about how our electric system must change. And especially with the impacts of extreme weather, there's an increased focus on how we should generate and consume energy in the future. There's also an increased focus on the public policies that will guide the state as a whole towards decarbonization. For well over a century, electricity has made vital contributions to the growth of the U.S. economy and the quality of American life. And while this remarkable system of systems will continue to serve us well, risks from climate change and demands for a cleaner energy system mean that the grid in New York faces serious challenges over the next two decades. Challenges that will demand the intelligent use of new energy technologies and the adoption of new regulatory policies. I see a dramatically decarbonized grid um, by 2040. So you're going to see many more renewables, many more carbon-free resources on the grid. In addition, you're going to see more distributed energy resources, um, i.e. rooftop solar and other resources located at, on the distribution system that are aggregated there are a lot of changes uh, that will have to happen, um, but um, these changes um, are also really exciting to see because uh, they'll result uh, in a much cleaner grid than the one we have today. Welcome to The Grid of the Future, a new video series by the New York Independent System Operator, where we'll look closely at the changing electric industry and ask hard questions about what it will take for New York State to achieve its clean energy and decarbonization targets while maintaining system reliability. We'll also examine closely the impact of the many changes happening today to our power system. This is episode one, State of the Grid. Electricity powers our economy and helps sustain our modern way of life. It helps support our healthcare system, and schools, and small businesses and homes. Generally speaking, our grid for the last hundred years has been built on the idea of central station generation. Large generating stations fueled by natural gas, hydropower, and nuclear facilities that predictably and reliably supply thousands of megawatts of power on a continuous basis to large amounts of consumers, whole cities in fact. This industry has been uh, in place for over a hundred years and there haven't been really significant changes uh, in terms of how the industry operates, in terms of how the power system runs. When you think about the technologies that are being introduced onto the grid and when you think about the complexity associated with managing these new technologies and integrating them into the existing grid, it requires a tremendous coordination. Today, the grid is evolving at an increasing pace to be cleaner, more dynamic, and complex. Made up mostly of renewable forms of power like wind, solar, and battery storage facilities, along with small-scale distributed energy technologies that will be owned and run by consumers, even homeowners themselves. This kind of change provides as many challenges as it does opportunities. Our objective is to use the tools at our disposal, our processes in place to maintain reliability, to support our markets, to help New York State achieve these policy goals that they have for energy, but do so in a way that maintains reliability and market efficiency for consumers. With extreme weather and a changing climate, the advancement of renewables will subject our future grid to the whims of Mother Nature more frequently. Also, constraints in the existing transmission system that limit the capability to deliver the energy also poses a challenge to be met. One of the most important elements of managing a power system is you always want to have some reserve resources to manage contingencies. Unplanned events happen all the time on the system, and a good system design factors in or anticipates that those unplanned events are going to happen, and you've got resources available to fill in when they do. We believe very strongly that markets are the most effective mechanism to deliver efficient, low-cost power to New Yorkers, and we're committed to maintaining and advancing those markets as a means and a mechanism for New York to help New York State achieve those goals. Put simply, 
We need to build more transmission infrastructure from upstate to downstate New York to move more carbon-free power to where demand and consumption is greatest. We operate the grid all day, every day, to keep the lights on for all of New York. We're subject to state and federal regulations that require us to operate the bulk electric system around the clock to very high standards for the benefit of all consumers in the state. The ability to source power to reliably meet ever-changing grid conditions and serve New York's electric consumers will always be paramount. There are a number of things that the RTOs, ISOs uh, can do, and, and FERC has been working uh, with each of them uh, to make these changes possible. One is more uh, efficient uh, price formation uh, so that flexible resources are compensated for the value they provide when they provide it. Uh, another is having uh, more transmission uh, so that resources can be accessed when they're needed by the grid. Um, battery storage uh, can be helpful. Anything that basically allows flexible resources uh, to participate in the markets uh, so as to help each RTO ISO balance load with supply at all times, which is something that an RTO ISO has to do to maintain reliability. With the oversight and regulation of entities like the State Public Service Commission and the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, we operate the transmission system with these goals always in mind. The consequence of approaching this transition in a less responsible way is we will not be able to serve New York customers. New Yorkers will not have the reliability, the dependency on the power grid that they have come to expect and that they deserve. How do we maintain reliability during this change? We'll need a full portfolio of resources that can be dispatched in response to any change in real-time conditions. For instance, the level of energy production from wind resources is constantly changing due to its dependency on the weather. In 2020, for example, there were 74 instances when wind resources in New York State combined to supply less than 100 megawatts to the grid for periods lasting more than eight hours. Even as more renewables connect to the system, weather dependency like low wind events will lead to periods with reduced levels of energy to serve load. That's where new technologies like battery storage and green hydrogen come into play, capturing clean energy for use later when it's needed most. Just last week, we hit a brand new record on the system, 1,808 megawatts of wind, which exceeded the previous record by a considerable amount. 12 hours later, the total output statewide was 20 megawatts. That's a tremendous variation in terms of the highs and the lows. And what we need to do is have a system with resources to be able to fill in those gaps uh, for those periods of time when the wind isn't performing. And the concept of beneficial electrification, like electric vehicles, electric heating, and cooling systems, will also change the grid as we know it, something that, as a state, we'll need to prepare for without the fossil-fueled central station resources of old. State and local policies are encouraging the adoption of technologies that support the transition of fossil fuel intensive sectors of the economy to electricity. Near-term efforts are focused on transportation and building sectors to replace fossil fuel vehicles, furnaces, and appliances. So how do we tackle that increase in electricity with large amounts of resources dependent on mother nature? Here at the New York ISO, we're studying the impacts of electrification on future system demands to make sure we can keep the lights on during this change. We have benefited from some of the smartest, most hardworking professionals uh, that really uh, exist. And what we see now is a bit of a transition where there's also a lot of new ideas, talent, and capability coming into the industry. We need to take advantage. We need to really maximize the potential of all of that uh, in order to manage through the transition. And we'll see what's on the other side. It has the potential to be, to be great. And that's the big takeaway. The amount of change we're embarking on is as massive as it is essential.